The Lapu-Lapu, also called Chief Lapu-Lapu, was named after Filipino Chief Lapu-Lapu, notorious for killing Magellan when he landed in the Philippines in 1521. The cocktail first shows up on menus in the 1940s, and most notably at Shuggie's Tropics in Beverly Hills. Harry Shuggie Sugarman moved to California from England when he was just three years old and quickly fell in love with the movies and Hollywood. His first job was as an usher at a theater in the San Bernardino Valley. He later moved to Hollywood and became friends with a few actors who were yet to make it big like Fatty Arbuckle and Charlie Chaplin. When he was around 21 years old, he married into a family that owned an amusement park, oil wells, and 500 theaters in Southern California. Working for his father-in-law, he was tasked with managing the Egyptian theater. It was the promotions of the new releases and premieres where he'd learned to put on a show. Sometime around 1934 to 1935, Sugarman opened the Tropics on North Rodeo Drive in Beverly Hills. This bamboo bar featured wine, cocktails, and some of the well-known tropical drinks of the time, like the Planter's Punch, Cuban Daiquiri, Shark's Tooth, and the Singapore Gin Sling. The menu would evolve over time. More and more influence from Don the Beachcomber can be seen in the menus from the late 1930s and 1940s, but Sugarman would assign the names of his Hollywood friends to his ever-expanding tropical drinks menu. Rita Hayworth's Karanga, Betty Davis's Samoa of Samoa, George Brent's Zulu, and Jimmy Roosevelt's Lapu Lapu. Now, sometime in the late 1930s, the Tropics gets its most well-known bartender, Ray Buin. Ray worked with Don the Beachcomber from 1934 to 1937 and was recruited away to the Seven Seas in 1937. Ray would also work at Christian's Hut on Catalina Island and a few other bars before landing at the Tropics in either the late 1930s or early 1940s, most likely around the same time the Lapu Lapu found its way on the menu. In 1961, Ray opens the Tiki Tea in Los Angeles where you can still order the Chief Lapu Lapu today, which consists of dark and light rums, lots of fruit juices, pineapple, passion, and orange. Sugarman ends up selling the Tropics to Steve Crane who would go on to turn it into the Luau in 1953, and the Lapu Lapu is no longer on the menu. Around the same time that the Tropics featured the Lapu Lapu in the 1940s, another tropical bar opened 62 miles away in Orange County. In 1947, the Royal Hawaiian opened in Laguna Beach. Now they claim to have invented the Lapu Lapu, which is possible, but regardless of the name, we have no idea if the contents of the Royal Hawaiian Lapu Lapu match the one first served at the Tropics, but it is very similar to the Tiki Tea Chief Lapu Lapu that would show up later. That means the true origin of the drink is unknown. Whether it was created by Ray Buen at the Tropics or it was an early or unknown Don the Beachcomber drink, we'll never really know. I kinda like to think that the drink was created and named by Ray Buen. Seems fortuitous that he was a bartender born in the Philippines who contributed so greatly to the tiki and tropical drink movement to be the one to name the drink after Chief Lapu Lapu. While it appears unlikely that the drink was created at the Royal Hawaiian, I think the drink has remained popular over the years because it has always been the signature cocktail at the Royal Hawaiian. Through the ownership changes, the ups and the downs, you could always order yourself a Lapu Lapu of some kind. While the recipe is a secret, the Los Angeles Times wrote about the Royal Hawaiian in 1990, and the story claims that the Lapu Lapu was just a double Mai Tai. Now that could be true because in the 1990s, the Mai Tai at the Royal Hawaiian could have been anything. I've only had the Lapu Lapu twice. In 2019, when the restaurant was struggling to even consider itself a tiki bar, and I thought it was okay. The second Lapu Lapu I had was in 2023, shortly after the renovation and the reopening. That was a great Lapu Lapu. The Lapu Lapu now that you can get there today is not the same as the original, but the menu does state that you can order the original version. The current drink menu was crafted by Dushan Zarich, who's a founder and co-owner of Employees Only in New York. There was a great documentary years ago about employees only called Hey Bartender, and it was even on YouTube in the last couple of years, so that's something you should check out. As far as I know, the drinks on the menu there right now are all secrets, or they're new enough that they're not out there in the world yet. The general recipe that most people default to is from Beach Bum Berry. He shares three different Chief Lapu Lapu variations of Beach Bum Remix, with the original recipe showing up in Grog Log. You can still order the original Grog Log, Intoxica, and Taboo Table in paperback versions, 
Most of these recipes are in other Beach Bum books and many are modified or updated. But if you're into the stuff like I am, these books are cool time capsules to have. Even cooler than these books is the Spiral Bound Grog Log, if you can find it. Right now, there's one on Amazon for $200, but they do pop up on eBay from time to time. Now, my source for this one is also pretty cool. It was sent to me by Dan Votto, who is the publisher of the original Grog Log, Intoxica, and Taboo Table. Dan's company, SLG Publishing in San Jose, published these books in the late 1990s. Uh, this one is not the original run of Spiral Bound, but the last edition they printed with the Spiral Bound before they switched to the paperback versions. So thank you to Dan for this. This is such a cool thing to have. The Grog Log Chief Lapu Lapu is three ounces of orange juice, three ounces of sweet and sour, one ounce of Trader Vic's passion fruit syrup, one and a half ounces of light Puerto Rican rum, and one and a half ounces of dark Jamaican rum. Now, I would be remiss if I did not share one more Lapu Lapu recipe, and this one is fun for the whole family. Back in 1989, Mickey Mouse released his own Lapu Lapu recipe from the Polynesian restaurant. That was two and a half cups chilled orange juice, two and a half cups chilled pineapple juice, two thirds a cup of apricot nectar, two and a half cups of chilled sour mix, two thirds a cup of simple syrup, and no rum. So there is no official Lapu Lapu recipe that dates back to the 1930s or the 1940s, which I kind of like. We can each play around with this to make it our own. And for mine, I took inspiration from the older Chief Lapu Lapu recipes and then took a look at the new Royal Hawaiian Lapu Lapu. For this Lapu Lapu, you'll need lemon juice, lime juice, orange juice, simple syrup, passion fruit syrup, a light rum, a pot still rum, a dark overproof rum, and club soda. The passion fruit syrup I'm using is 50 bricks. That's a one-to-one -one syrup sweetness. The drink still needs more sweetness because we have one ounce of citrus, plus the passion fruit syrup is also very tart. So I'm using a quarter ounce of a two-to-one simple. But you might want to bump that up to half an ounce or change it to a demerara vanilla or a cane syrup. I tried it with the cane syrup and it worked out very well. We'll build this drink in a drink mixer with half an ounce of lemon juice, half an ounce of lime juice, two ounces of orange juice, one ounce of passion fruit syrup, quarter ounce of simple syrup, one and a half ounces of light rum, one and a half ounces of a gold or blonde pot still rum, and one ounce of club soda. Flash bun this for just five seconds. We're gonna serve it in a snifter full of crushed ice. And then I'm gonna take about half an ounce of our 151 to use as a float. Serving about a quarter ounce here. I'm gonna garnish it with some mint. Then I'm gonna take half of a passion fruit and fill it with our remaining 151 and set it on fire. It's okay if your mint gets a little crispy here. It's part of the show. So there you go. The Lapu Lapu from we don't know. Let's try it. So I love this. It's juicy, it's fruity. Just one ounce of the pot still from Hamilton, and that comes through as like the big rum flavor. As you mix in that 151, you get more of those rich demerara notes, kind of that smoky funkiness going on. And then one and a half ounces of Don Q, a light rum. And sometimes I think we push too far to, to, to put a ton of flavorful rums in here, where using something like this can help highlight the rest of the cocktail. It, you'd still get all that juiciness. You still get all the citrus flavors of passion fruit but you're not overwhelming everything with the rums you're using. You're still getting a, a plenty boozy cocktail. And this version's not too sweet. It's, it's, it's on the borderline there of like too much fruit juice, but I like that some cocktails have this much in there. And then the orange juice, always getting a bad rap in a lot of tropical tiki cocktails, a lot of classic cocktails too, but used correctly in a juice like this that you want that juicy element, orange juice works just as good as anything else. 
So yeah, the original Lapu Lapu, it's not the greatest drink in the world, but if you use that as a template and you play around with some of the proportions and add the rums you like, you'll have something that is absolutely delicious. So that's it for this one. I'm Derek, this is Make and Drink. If you enjoyed the Lapu Lapu today, please give the video a like below. Consider subscribing to the channel. Check out the Patreon page if you want to support this channel. And otherwise, see you in the next one. Thing.